proudly looked after by APBA, the Australian Power Boat Association, and we are uh, privileged to have uh, the man, the head of the uh, APBA National, of course, uh, Glenn Banks. Banksy, mate, wherever you go, I seem to go, or wherever I go, you go. Or New Zealand, you know, we're all over the countryside, but uh, welcome to Lake Epilogue. Thank you, Sam, and um, thanks to the Victorian Outboard Club and the Victorian Speedboat Club and the Victorian Council for having us down here. It's a wonderful venue. I haven't been here before, and it is, it's just a lovely place. Made about 14 years, I think, since I've had races here up until about November last year. There was no water in it. You know, water was completely gone, but uh, this is where I got my start in uh, commentating uh, powerboat racing. But talking about the APBA, mate, you've had some uh, very, very hard uh, decisions to make over the last few years. How's it going? Look, Sam, I think, it, I think it's going great. Um, yeah, there has been some very, very difficult decisions to make and, and some of them have been forced upon us. At the end of the day, we're trying to make this sport as safe as we possibly can. I'm happy to discuss that with anybody who wants to come and talk to me today, you know, the direction we're taking, the direction we've been. Um, but, yeah, look, I, I think we'll do today. I think if we can keep everybody safer and, and um, the sport will, will continue to grow again. Mate, why I say that, and uh, folks, uh, you, might, you may not understand, or you may understand it, what I'm about to say, but Banksy, we've lost some very, very dear friends. Some friends that we've got to know over many, many years. I've got to know these guys uh, through commentating uh, them out on the water, and they are just terrific blokes, absolutely top gun blokes for the sport. Sam, they, they were, and they still are. You know, they're not only legends of the sport, but they were great blokes too, you know. Um, when you, you talk about the likes of John Cross and Brian McCosker and, and, and look, the list goes on, Larry Martin, uh, Tompkins. Martin Jeff Tompkins, mm. they were just terrific blokes and we, I really think we owe it to them so that, you know, what they've gone through and what their family's gone through is not wasted. We've got to learn from that, um, you know, and, the, and there's a number of, been, of changes been made, not only with with cells, obviously. We're trying to keep as many open cockpit boats on the water as we can, but also clothing and, and helmet changes and, and the like. We're just trying really hard to make this sport safer. And, you know, look, I hope everybody just sort of, you know, comes along with us. Um, anything you want, as I say, anything you want explained, just come and see me. I'm in the, the outboard pit area over with the formula boats. Um, just come and see me and, and we can talk about anything you want to talk about. And, of course, uh, you're down here this weekend with a magnificent boat, former uh, New Zealand uh, Formula One boat, built by Malcolm Jamison. Uh, he built two of them. Uh, Anthony Robinson has got one nearly identical. And the young fellow's uh, having a, a trundle out in there. How's he going? Mate, it, it, firstly, before I say anything, it is an absolutely wonderful piece of equipment. Absolutely wonderful piece of equipment. And, and Greg's just grabbed hold of it, and he loves it, you know. And... Um, Look, it's going to take us a little while to sort it out. We've, we've obviously gone from Malcolm's Formula 1 engine down to our own Formula 2 engine. Um, so it's not quite as powerful, but the boat is just such a pretty thing to watch and, and so well made. And, um, look, we're hoping to make it as competitive as we can. Well, mate, uh, it's, uh, it's not uh, uh, timber either. You know, he, he's, it's got the real deal. Uh, you know, he's really gone to uh, lengths to make it a very, very strong and uh, fast boat. Yeah, the whole thing's carbon fibre. When you, you know, if anybody wants to look at it, when you look inside the cockpit, the steering wheel's carbon fibre, the pedals are carbon fibre. Um, the thing is just an absolute wonderful piece of equipment. It's beautiful, really well made, and, and such a credit to him. How'd you get off? Get it off him, mate. You know, was he got a bit tired, or what, what, what's, uh, what's the secret? Mate, I, I really can't tell you. There's so many people have said to us when we first started talking about getting a KRB. The amount of people in the Grand Prix series said, oh, you won't get one. Well, not, not only did we not get one, we actually got Malcolm's one. And, and look, I don't know how we got it. I think we might have just been in the right place at the right time because um, so many people have tried and we were just lucky enough to get it. Well, uh, Greg's in the seat, but is Glenn going to get in there? Have you, you thought about, you know, hopping in and having a, having a trundle? Um, mate, never say never, but um, <laughs> I think Greg's much better at it than me. So while well, we're a bit serious, I think he can stay there. Mate, it's great to see the uh, Sydney Siders, uh, you know, down here to support uh, the VSPC, uh, like the likes of, uh, of Wayne Smith, the likes of uh, Chris Pugsley, uh, Impatient, you know, Paul Valor and uh, these ones. Just terrific to uh, get them uh, out of Sydney and down into Victoria to give, uh, you know, us Victorian public people a, a look at what's around, uh, you know, the country. Yeah, well, that's, you know, look, it's... As I said earlier, I, I'd just like to thank the Victorians for, for actually bringing us down and, and we really appreciate the chance and I'm sure that Wayne and, and Chris and, 
and Paul do as well. Um, to come down to such a nice venue um, is another reason to come. You know, I mean, the roads are getting much, much better and it's not such a long trip anymore, but, yeah, no, look, we just really appreciate them, them having us here, so thanks to them. Well, um, thanks for talking to us. I've got a great weekend and I hope, uh, you know, you can get a few wins with that... Uh, Magnificent looking boat, and as I say, uh, folks, if you can come up uh, very close to it and have a look at it, you'll know what Banksy and I are talking about, because it is an absolutely super Formula One hull, and uh, Glenn, all the best. Thanks, Sam. Thanks, everybody. There we are. Well, we've got the uh, president of uh, APBA National, Glenny Banks, and Greg uh, Banks, of course, with the uh, Car B Racing Formula One boat, and uh, there's the uh, 25s that are out on the water, uh, Going through their paces, as I said, it's very, very hard to distinguish what boat is what, but the young Crossy is out there in the rival boat. He'll be uh, no doubt having a, a, a dice. We'll just have a look and see when he comes round. But uh, the late and great John Cross, Hot Cross as I nicknamed him, uh, over many, many years of uh, blown boat racing, unlimited displacements. He uh, drove the small block and I remember calling him with uh, Graham Acosta and the likes, uh, Pete Smith at uh, Windsor on many, many occasions, and it was a very tight circuit. And, uh, of course, then he went up into the big one for Johnny Backer and, unfortunately, had that tragic accident at uh, Lake Moala Yarrawonga on the uh, World Grand Prix Hydrofane Championship Carnival. But uh, there he is, I think, running up there in uh, third place at the moment, I think he is. Uh, Crossy, so he is trying to uh, get up on terms with these two-way leaders at the moment as they go through, and the green flag is still out. So we've still got... Uh, Probably two laps left to go for the 25 horsepower, but uh, they are very, very competent uh, in their driving, going up into the breeze, and uh, this is where, as I said, with the uh, with the monotype hull, they can get that air underneath and uh, can cause a few problems, but they lean forward, they use their uh, weight to uh, counteract the balance of the boat. Whether it be going up into or downwind, you'll see him sit back a bit further. Well, if that's Crossy up there in third, he's starting to lift that boat out of the water as they wheel their way around and uh, come into uh, front straight away once again. I think well, they'll get three down and uh, maybe one to go. Although the green flag is still out at the ready. So they're running over the long, long course as they go through. So still uh, no, no yellow flag out at, at the moment as they run past the tower once again. But these two out in front, oh, it's a little bit of hard, rough water there right in front of us as they go past. Now uh, there's a good dice going on back in third and fourth place at the moment as they run uh, through there. As I said, they are really 25 horsepower, so uh, they're pulling a few numbers, these guys out there. And I must also uh, say a big thank you to Lindsay Johnson, who's a very, very good mate of uh, Johnny Cross. Lindsay, of course, comes along and supports the, the youngins in this category and it's great to uh, see Lindsay uh, going on with it now that uh, John is no longer with us but he'll be looking down on top and saying come on young fellow what are you doing come on dad said go 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 for Justin Cross in the uh, little rival boat as I said it's a fantastic way to uh, come up through the field and uh, become uh, well known in powerboat racing whichever way you go whether you go to displacements whether you go to uh, a tunnel or an outboard or a hydroplane, but it is a good way to really have a lot of fun, enjoy it. Yeah, it is uh, dangerous, but, you know, they handle it very, very well as the yellow flag goes out. So one lap to go for the 25 horsepowers, and you can see that they are already, quite a few of them are uh, sitting these boats upwind and downwind. And they really, as I said, have a ball out there. They probably go back and talk about it. Ha, ah, gotcha. Did you see me do that? Yeah, did you see that manoeuvre that I did? They, I would say, talk about it uh, once they come back on the land, but they're all handling this tall little tough enough. The South Australian boat got up out of the water past the tower, the light blue. And really, that is the uh, tough enough boat as he goes down there, but the race leaders... Already down the back straight away, so it is a matter of a checkered flag for the 25 horsepower. As we wait for them to come through, they've got a, a, under a half lap left to go. So it looks as if uh, there will be no change in this one. 
So now looking back at tough enough over on the back part of the circuit now. He's got that boat sitting beautifully on the water at the moment. The good day's going on with that second and third placing. There's the race leader in the front straight away. And the chicken flag is at the ready. So put your hands together for them, folks, because uh, they really to turn it on. They really like to go hard like uh, some of the uh, seasoned drivers. And they really turn it on. I've seen uh, young Crossy uh, have a little bit of a come to grief. He's gone over backwards here, I think, at the last meeting or the meeting before that. But he's got through OK. So there we are, the 25 horsepower. And uh, that is pretty good. Here comes Tough Enough. Oh, he's got the boat out of the water again. He's starting to lift it, but he goes through and will take a chicken flag in fifth placing for 25 horsepowers.